First of all, thanks. No problem. Uh, I no appreciate problem. you taking the time out um, to meet with me today. I know you got a busy schedule. You got Ann Arbor coming up, big show at Uvel, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. another trip to China, I believe, that following that. So yes, you got a yeah. you got a busy schedule. So I appreciate you spending the time. No problem. What I wanted to do was actually uh, see if we could continue the conversation that we began the restaurant some months ago, uh, <laughs> where um, uh, <clears throat> we had a, a free ranging conversation about community, about uh, influences to your art, to social policy, the neighborhood, um, and to continue with some of those themes as well as uh, to hear about the developments that have occurred since, take you in different directions as both in Heidelberg and as uh, uh, an individual artist yourself. So if you're willing, we'll just see, see where we go and see what happens. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. You grew up on Heidelberg Street. That's right? true. So yes. you have been here 50 some years. <laughs> and what's it? What's it been like? What was it like for you growing up on Heidelberg? You've seen a lot of changes, I'm sure, in all that time. You've contributed to a lot of changes here uh, in that time. Um, you have, from what I recall, there, there were two very prominent figures in your life that helped shape you as an artist. Say a few things about I believe your grandmother and grandfather? Grandpa Mackey, my uh, grandfather, who gave me a paintbrush when I was nine, meant the world to me. Mm. Uh, my grandfather was like my dad. Uh, he also became my best friend as I got older. I, uh, I was thinking about uh, this interview last night, and I remember a moment in my life when I was five and my grandfather came home from work and he gave me this toy car. <laughs> and it was like, it was like everything to me. I still see it, I still remember that. I remember the conversation him and I would have over the years and things that he would say to me and he would take me with him. He was a commercial painter and he said he saw something in me and um, he also said that he could trust me. And I just loved him. I just loved him so much, so much. I, I can still hear his voice. Um, I can still remember those conversations that we would have mm -hmm. when I was a kid growing up. He was my best friend. And my grandmother, she, uh, <laughs> um, she was also a friend too. She was my grandmother, this beautiful person who just loved me, and I loved her very much. She would also, when I was a kid, uh, she would keep my money for me. <laughs> <laughs> and she taught me the importance of saving money. Right. And there was times when she needed extra money, and she would call me and say to me, can I use some of your money? And I would say to her, no problem, you can do it. I said, you didn't have to call me. She said, it was out of principle. So I loved her very much, my mm -hmm. grandmother, my grandfather. It's important lessons about life as well as art. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you come from a big family? Ten of us. A large family. It was ten of us. Um, had a lot of fun. It was eight boys and two girls. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big family. A big family. They had yeah. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got a right. lot of respect from the neighborhood because people knew that I came from this large family. So mm -hmm. they respected us as, as kids growing mm -hmm. up. You had four of your um, brothers uh, uh, came to what, some violent ends, right? I mean, their lives were ended in the streets of Detroit, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that influenced your course of life as as an artist. Mm -hmm. It did. It did. I have four brothers that dis uh, that are deceased. Mm -hmm. um, drugs also played a big part in that. Um, uh, three of my, uh, two of my brothers went to Vietnam and uh, came back and they were strung out on heroin. 
for many, many years, and I watched and witnessed this, the change, mm -hmm. leaving here one way and coming back another way. Uh, uh, speaking of change, yeah. change is, it's part of life. It's something mm -hmm. you can't get around on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, four brothers that deceased. But also taking it a little deeper, I'm looking, as I get older, I realize that everything in this life, in this life here, there's no mistakes, it's all purpose. There was a way to go. Mm -hmm. There was a way to leave here. And I accept that. And your purpose in picking up where they didn't get a chance to go? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm going this way and they went that way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as I said here, and, and what you just said to me, uh, brings me um, um, and Dr. Rudolf Steiner in his book, The Philosophy of Freedom. He talks about this way and that way and mm -hmm. up and down. And it's all part of the equation called life. And so that was the way to go. And I'm doing what I'm doing. And I've been put here to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And I believe that now. I believe you told me a story about your uh, grandmother, uh, um, I don't know whether it's a dream. She was dressed in white or in, and saw you as a, uh, that you had a special gift to make a special contribution before you ever realized what that might be. <laughs> that was my, my great-grandmother. Oh, great-grandmother. Uh, great-grandmother who um, I would sit, and every Sunday she would go to church. She was the mother of the church. She was in her 80s, and so she would dress in white. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid, and I would come down the street and see her sitting on the porch. And she looked just like an angel. And I'd have these great stories with her. She was very, uh, she was very sanctified. She was, mm -hmm. um, church was her life. And she told me the story that God told her to tell me that I was going to do something great in the world. And I got my attention. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to her. And so she would have these conversations with me about me doing something great over and over over and over, to the point she had my ear, and I would pay attention. So important influences then in uh, those early years. Your grandfather saw you as somebody you could trust, believe in, talks about money. <laughs> your grandmother, uh, uh, much along the same lines, and your great-grandmother about art. That's some very influential, positive family mm -hmm. behind you in the midst of some very difficult situations. Well, I think you need both. You need the difficult times, and you also need good times, and you have to mm -hmm. find a balance, and so you need both. Mm -hmm. I can't see a world where you didn't have both entities. Mm -hmm. And so um, today, I understand what it means to, to, to become balanced in your life, in your way of thinking, and understanding, at least for myself, understanding now that uh, you need both. Both, both entities, good and bad. Mm -hmm. And that may bring us to the uh, uh, description which I often have heard you use describing uh, the work at Heidelberg that art is medicine. And art is powerful medicine and that proceeds even uh, urban renewal or uh, the refurbishing of buildings, but that art as medicine is essential. So what is art as medicine for you? Well, I would have to say for me, it's the Heidelberg Project. It's something that I, I started 29 years ago. I don't believe you can heal the world first without healing the people first. I think the people come first. You heal the minds of the people, then you can heal the world, you can heal the city. I live by that now. You get people to start thinking in a new way and you get them to start understanding who they are and what they are. But it takes transforming the mind, the paradigm, the psyche into believing that you are somebody. And I, and I, I see it, it's been working. Mm -hmm. It's been working with myself and people that come there to visit the project from all over the world. You need a medicine and you need something Grade or something that's going to penetrate this mm -hmm. and this. And so I see art as a medicine. I see the whole creation as a work of art, transforming and changing. It's the true medicine. Uh, 
in what ways has it changed you? You've been the creator, um, and yet it's been working on you as well as uh, as you've extended it to others. I've been very fortunate. I've been on both sides of the of, of the of the fence, if I may. But that was the time I didn't know. That was the time I was confused. That was the time I hated myself. That was the time I didn't like me. Mm -hmm. And so I've been over there. And now, and then being over here took me to, to go over here and then to find a balance. So I've been very fortunate. Being over there and then over here and then you realize that you have to find a balance. You need a little bit of all of it. Right. So it changed me. It opened my eyes. I began to understand the importance of loving myself. I began to understand the importance of change and I welcome change. I think that we live in a world where a lot of people are stuck. I've been stuck. I've been stuck. Mm -hmm. I've been in deep th darkness myself. And that's why I can relate to other people that might be in darkness, might be stuck, because I've been there. The trauma, the, the not knowing, the being so lost that you don't know which end is up. Oh, yeah. where you run, at least I did, when you run and chase an illusion what you think reality is, you are killing yourself and don't even know it. And I, I, so I've been out there. Uh, there was a time I, uh, I would drop uh, uh, speed and mushrooms and did it, yeah, did all of it, trying to find myself and thought that that could help me to find myself, that could help me to create a reality. Mm -hmm. To a long journey of soul searching <laughs> and finally found it through your art. Through my art and um, yes, I would have to say, yeah, the art saved me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was something that I, I'd been doing all of my life. I started when I was nine. Grandpa Mackey gave me mm -hmm. a paintbrush. That was my anchor. That was my medicine. Mm -hmm. Even as a kid, it was my medicine. Is there something special about the motifs that you use that helps deliver that message? In the circles or dots, the clocks, the faces, uh, numbers. Maybe we can see some of the your work here. Um, there's a special uh, meaning in that for you that you keep working with those. Uh, uh, particular designs, motifs. <laughs> the faces of God, for instance. Okay. As a kid trying to understand this entity, God, the creator of the universe, trying to make sense of out of that. You know, here's a, I'm, I'm a kid, and and someone's telling me about God, and and you ask the question, well, who's God? And and they tell you, that all in all, he is it's, 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 uh, this entity that is surpasses all human uh, consciousness and and trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found myself wondering. I found myself thinking about that as a kid. I was, I was mad at God. I was trying to fight with him. And so I've been there too. And so I find myself talking about it now. I, uh, I still try to understand it and figure it out. And so the way for me to figure it out is to paint about it. Mm -hmm to make it part of my work, I would have to say now, I live for it because I believe it now, I accept it. And as I study and as I travel, I have come to understand that there's no way of getting around it. You know, here's this, this entity that is all powerful. Mm -hmm. That's everything. And created this universe and myself. So I talk about it in my work. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's something distinctive about each drawing while well, they're different. It's with the choppy teeth. There, there's a message there? There's a message there. I, uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I ate a lot of candy. And so <laughs> I ate a lot of candy when I was a kid. I loved sweets. Uh, my grandfather also, in its, in its um, uh, later years, he had no teeth, but he loved jelly beans and 
I used to laugh about it. And so uh, I found myself playing around when I'm doing a painting. I'm playing with the teeth. And and I said to myself when I was a kid, I said, I'm going to have great teeth when I grow up. And so it's part of my, uh, it's part of my message, okay. teeth. And then having some fun with it, kind of playing with it, having fun with it. Mm -hmm. Where in this case, I'm doing a series called The Faces of God. And here I am giving God a lot of teeth. And mm -hmm. in some cases, big teeth. And, and uh, yeah, just playing with it, having fun, playing and a around. lot of different colors, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. shows up in a lot of different colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, see, okay, here's God, and so God can have very colorful teeth. You know, yeah. he can have all kind of teeth. So mm -hmm. just having some fun with it, creating a, a reality, a reality of what I see in my psyche, mm -hmm. the teeth of God. And the circles? Circle of life. Round and around we go, over and over. Everything is connected to spirit law. That's something else I, I, I read when I was in Switzerland, uh, Dr. Rudolf Steiner and his book, The Philosophy of Freedom, where he talks about everything, everything, everything in the universe, outside the universe, is connected. I see it. It's all connected to spirit law, which is invisible. But connected. But Can't connected. see it, but believe in it, mm -hmm. and it's there. It's there. Like a lifeline. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the clocks. What time is it? Yeah. Plato said, uh, time is the moving image of reality. What's your reality? What is reality, really? You know, living in a world that changes constant. In every moment, every second, things are changing, evolving. So what is reality then? Are you saying that reality keeps changing? Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Nothing stands still. Everything is moving, traveling. So your, your art is a reflection of change as well as a motivator for change, of engaging the viewer with the art to think. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be powerful and arresting in some way, different, mm -hmm. to break through, mm -hmm. I assume. Well, also being me, uh, coming to the realization of understanding the importance of being self. So in being self, it makes me be me. And so it sets me apart from other people because I know me. And then it's imperative that other people find themselves. But yet and still, going back to the circle, we all connect it through spirit law. All connected, but different, but connected. Why do you think that, that art as medicine um, has been so well received by outsiders and often greeted with such controversy by insiders or the neighborhood as opposed to larger community? What do you think that's all about? I think it's what it is. I think that um, uh, it, it's an old uh, cliche, I've heard this, where a prophet is not, uh, you know, he's not accepted at home, you know, mm -hmm. you go someplace else and they roll out the red carpet. But the challenge is to get, is to bring it home and to teach and to educate people. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. That's the real challenge because you can go someplace else and people accept you. For what you are, but at home, you pay a price, and the price is to teach and to help people to understand. See, my job is to get people to see. Mm -hmm. Most people don't want to see. They are afraid of reality. They are afraid of self. I've been there. To know that everything you're looking for is in here, it's in you, it's you. But you have to know that, and most people don't know that. So you come home, you do it here, and people say, he's crazy, he's this, he's that. That's part of the price that you pay. Nothing is out of order. Everything is in divine order. And then people start to come around, slowly but surely. They start to come around. You can't give up. 
or get discouraged, even though I had those moments where I said, oh, I'm tired of this, but you can't give up. 28 years you've been not giving up, been developing, and... Uh, it takes a lifetime in some cases to get it right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As you've gone along, you've gotten stronger. Yes. And as you've gone along, do you think the community's hearing you? Do you think they're getting the education? Absolutely. Absolutely. You speak it, you plant those seeds, and you step back and you let nature come in there and do what it needs to do. And so, no, none of this has gone out void. 